Hi all, Larry Powell second here with another reading video where I'm reading from the Eye of the World, book one in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. And today I'm reading chapter number 35. Chapter 35, Camlin. Rand twisted up to kneel behind the driver's seat. He could not help laughing with relief. We made it, Matt. I told you we'd... Words died in his mouth as his eyes fell on Camlin. After Berlon, even more after the ruins of Shadar Lagoth, he had thought he knew what a great city would look like. But this, this was more than he would have believed. <clears throat> Outside the Great Wall, buildings clustered as if every town he had passed through had been gathered and set down there side by side and pushed to, and all pushed together. Ends thrust their upper stories above the tile roofs of houses and squat warehouses, broad and windowless, sh shouldered against them all. Red brick and gray stone and plastered white jumbled and mixed together. They spread as far as the eye could see. Berlon could have vanished into it without being noticed, and Whitebridge swallowed up twenty times over with hardly a ripple. And the wall itself, the sheer fifty-foot height of pale gray stone, streaked with silver and white, swept out in a great circle, curving to... <clears throat> north and south till he wondered how far it must run all along its length towers rose round and standing high above the wall's own height red and white banners whipping in the wind atop each one from inside the wall other towers peeked out slender towers even taller than those at the walls, and, dome, and domes gleaming white and gold in the sun. A thousand stories had painted, it had painted cities in his mind, the great cities of kings and queens, of thrones and powers and legends, and Camlin fit into those mind-bending pictures as water fits into a jug. <coughs> The cart creaked down the wide road toward the city, toward tower-flanked gates. The wagons of a merchant's train rolled out of those gates under a vaulting archway, and the stone that would, that could have let a giant through, or ten giants abreast, unwalled markets lined with lined the road on. Both sides, roof tiles listening red and purple with stalls and pins in the space between, the spaces between. Calves bawled, cattle lolled, geese honked, chickens clucked, goats bleated, sheep bawled, and people bargained at the top of their lungs. A wall of noise funneling, funneled them toward the gates of Camelon. <coughs> What did I tell you, but had had to raise his voice to near a shout in order to be heard. The grandest city in the world, built by Ogier, you know, at least the inner city and palace were. It's, it's that old, Camlin is. Camlin, where good Queen Morgase, the light illum, her makes the law and holds the peace for Andor. The greatest city on earth. Rand was ready to agree. His mouth hung open, and he wanted to put his hands over his ears to shut out the din. People crowded the road as thick as folk in Evansville crowded the green at bell time. <clears throat> he remembered thinking there were too many people in Berlin to be believed and almost laughed. He looked at Matt and grinned. Matt did have his hands over his ears and his shoulders were hunched up as if he wanted to cover them with those two. 
How are we going to hide in this? He demanded loud, loudly when he saw Rand looking. How can we tell who to trust with so many, so many, or so bloody many, like the noise? Rand looked at Blunt, or looked at Bunt before answering. The farmer was caught up in staring at the city with the noise he might not have heard anyway. Still, Rand put his mouth close to Matt's ear. How can they find us among so many? Can't you see it? You wool-headed idiot, we're safe. If you ever learn to watch your bloody thoughts. <coughs> Can't you see it, you wool-headed idiot, we're safe. If you ever learn to watch your bloody tongue. He flung out a hand to take in everything the markets. The city walls still ahead. Look at it, Matt. Anything can, could happen here. Anything. We might even find Moraine sitting for us, or waiting for us, and Egwin and all the rest. If they're alive, if you ask me, they're as dead as the Gleeman. The grin faded from Rand's face, and he turned to watch the gates come nearer. Anything could happen in a city like Camelon, he held that thought stubbornly. The horse could not move any faster. The horse could not move any faster. Flap the reins as Bunt would. The closer to the gates they came, the thicker the crowd grew, jostling together shoulder to shoulder, pressing against the carts and wagons. <clears throat> the horse could not move any faster, flap the reins as Bunt would. The closer to the gates they came, the thicker the crowd grew, jostling together shoulder to shoulder, pressing against the carts and wagons headed in or heading in. Rand was glad to see a good many were dusty young men afoot with little in the way of belongings. Whatever their ages, a lot of the crowd pushing toward the gates had a travel-worn look, rickety carts, and tired horses. Clothes wrinkled from many nights of sleeping rough, dragging, foot, or dragging steps and weary eyes. But weary or not, those eyes were fixed on the gates, as if getting inside the walls would strip away all their fatigue. Half a dozen of the Queen's guards. Uh. <clears throat> Whatever their ate, Ram was glad to see a good many were dusty young men, afoot with little in the way of belongings. Whatever their age, a lot of the crowd pushing toward the gates had a travel-worn look, rickety carts and tired horses, clothes wrinkled from many nights of sleeping rough, dragging steps, dragging steps and weary eyes, but weary or not, those eyes were fixed on the gates as if getting inside the walls would strip away all their fatigue. Half a dozen of the Queen's guards stood at the gates, their clean Red and, red and white tabards and burnished plate and mail, a sharp contrast to most of the people streaming under, to most of the people streaming under the stone arch, backs rigid and heads straight. They eyed the incomers with disdainful wariness. It was plain they would just as soon have turned away most of those coming and aside from keeping her word, hmm. half, half a dozen of the Queen's guards stood at the gates, their clean 
red and white tabards and burnished plate of mail. A sharp contrast to most of the people streaming under the stone arch. Backs rigid and heads straight, they eyed the incomers with disdainful wariness. It was plain they would just as soon have turned away most of those coming in. Aside from keeping a way clear for traffic, leaving the city, though, and having a hard voice or having a hard word with those who tried to push too fast, they did not hinder anyone. Keep your places. Don't push. Don't push. <clears throat> Keep your places. Don't push. Don't push. The light blinds you. There's room for everybody. The light help us. Keep your places. Bunt's voice. <clears throat> don't push the light blinds you there's room for everybody the light help us keep your places Bunt's cart rolled past the gates with the slow tide of the throng into Camlin the city rose on low hills like steps climbing to a center another wall encircled that center shining pure white and running over the hills inside that were even more towers and domes white and gold and purple their elevation atop the hills making them but seem to look down on the rest of Camlin. Rand thought that must be the inner, inner city of which Bunt had spoken. The Camlin Road itself changed as soon as it was inside the city becoming a wide boulevard split down the middle by broad strips of grass and trees. The grass was brown and the tree branches bare, but people hurried by as if they saw nothing unusual, laughing, talking, arguing, doing all the things that people do just as if they had no idea that there had been no spring yet this year and might be none. They did not see, Rand realized, <clears throat> just as if they had no idea that there had been no spring yet this year and might be none. They did not see, Rand realized, could not or would not. Their eyes slid away from leafless branches and they walked across the dead and dying grass without once looking down. What they did not see, they... could ignore what they did not see was not really there. Gaping at the city and the people, Rand was taken by surprise when the cart turned down a side street, narrower than the boulevard, but still twice as wide as any street in Evansville. Bunt drew the horse to a halt and turned to look back at them hesitantly. The traffic was a bit lighter than usual. <clears throat> Rand was taken by surprise when the cart turned. Turned down a side street, narrower than the boulevard, but still twice as wide as any street in Evansville. Bunt drew the horse uh, to a halt and turned to look back at them hesitantly. The traffic was a bit lighter here. The crowd was split around the cart without breaking stride. What you're hiding under your cloak, is it really what Holdwin says? Rand was in the act of tossing his saddlebags over his shoulder. He did not even twitch. What do you mean? 
His voice was steady too. <clears throat> his stomach was a sour knot, but his voice was steady. Matt stifled a yawn with one hand, but he shoved the other under his coat, clutching the dagger from Shadar Lagoth. Rand knew, and his eyes had a, had a hard, hunted look under the scarf around his head. But ask, or avoided looking at Matt as if he knew there was a weapon in that hidden hand. Don't you mean not, nothing, I suppose? Look at. As, don't mean nothing, I suppose. Look now, if you heard I was coming to Camlin, you were there long enough to hear the rest. Was I, after a reward, I'd have made some excuse to look or to go in the goose and crown. I speak to hold one. Only I don't much like hold one, and I don't like the that field of area of yours. <clears throat> don't mean nothing, I suppose. Look now, if you if you heard I was coming to Camlin, that you were there long enough to hear the rest. Was I after a reward? I'd have made some excuse to go in the goose and crown and speak to Holdwin. Only I don't much like Holdwin, and I don't like that friend of his, not at all. Seems like he wants you to more than he wants anything else. I don't know what he wants, Rand said. We've never seen him before. It might even be the truth. He could not tell who, who or he could not tell one fade from another. Uh huh. Well, like I said, I don't know nothing. And I guess I don't want to. There's enough trouble around for everybody without I go looking for more. Matt was slow in gathering his things, and Rand was already in the street before he started climbing down. Rand waited impatiently. Matt turned, stifling from the cart. Matt was slow in gathering his things. Rand was already in the street before he started climbing down. Rand waited impatiently. Matt turned stiffly from the cart, hugging bow and quiver and blanket rolled to his chest, muttering under his breath. Heavy shadows darkened the undersides of, it, of his eyes. <clears throat> when Matt turned stiffly from the cart, hugging bow and quiver and blanket rolled to his chest, muttering under his breath. Heavy shadows darkened the undersides of his eyes. Rand's stomach grumbled, and he grimaced. Hunger combined with a sour twisting in his gut made him afraid he was going to vomit. Matt was staring at him now, expectantly. Which way to go? What to do now? Blunt leaned over and beckoned him closer. He went, hoping for advice from Camlin. Blunt leaned over and beckoned him closer. He went, hoping for advice about Camlin. I'd hate that. Or I'd hide that. The old farmer paused and looked around warily. People pushed by on both sides of the cart, but except for a few passing curses about blocking the way. People pushed by on both sides of the cart, but except for a few passing curses about blocking the way, no one paid them any
people pushed by on both sides of the cart, but except for a few passing curses about blocking the way, no one paid them any attention. Stop wearing it, he said. It's offensive. Hide it, sell it, give it away. That's my advice. Stop wearing it, he said. Hide it, sell it, give it away. That's my advice. Things like that going to... A thing like that's going to draw attention. And I guess you don't want any kind... Or don't want any of that. Abruptly, he straightened, clucking to his horse, and drove slowly. Uh, <clears throat> Abruptly, he straightened, clutching, or clucking to his horse, and drove slowly on down the cr crowded street without another word or a backward glance. A wagon loaded with barrels rumbled toward them. Rand jumped out of the way, staggered, and excused. Abruptly, he straightened, clucking to his horse, and drove slowly on down the crowded street without another word or a backward glance. Or backward glance. A wagon loaded with barrels rumbled toward them. Rand jumped out of the way, staggered, and when he looked again, Bunt and his cart were lost to sight. What do you? What do we want th then? Matt demanded. Wagon load of barrels, barrels rumbled toward them. Rand jumped out of the way, staggered, and when he looked again, Bunt and his cart were lost to sight. What do we do now? Matt demanded. He licked his lips, staring wide-eyed at all the people rush, pushing by and the buildings towering as much as six stories above the street. We're in Camlin, but what do... What do we do? He had uncovered his ears, but his hands twisted. But his hands twitched as if he wanted to put them out. We're in Camlin, but what do we do? He had uncovered his ears, but his hands twitched as if he wanted to put them back. A hum lay on the city, the low, steady, the low, steady drone of hundreds of shops working, thousands of people talking to Rand. It was like being inside a giant beehive. He had uncovered his ears, but his hands twitched as if he wanted to put them back. A hum lay on the city, the low, steady drone of hundreds of shops working, thousands of people talking to Rand. It was like being inside a giant beehive constantly interwoven. A hum lay on the city at the low, steady drone of hundreds of shops working, thousands of people talking to Rand. It was like being inside a giant beehive constantly buzzing. Even if they are here, Rand, how could we find them in all of this? Moraine will find us, Rand said slowly. The immensity of the city was a weight on his shoulders. He wanted to get away to hide from all the people and noise. The void eluded him despite Tam's teachings. 
His eyes drew the city into it. He concentrated instead on what was right around him, ignoring everything that lay beyond. Just looking at that one street, it almost seemed like Berlone, Berlone the last place they had all thought they were safe. Nobody's safe anymore. Maybe they are all dead. What do you do then? They're alive. Edwin's alive, he said fiercely. Several passerbyers, passersby, Several passersby looked at him oddly. Maybe, Matt said, maybe. What if Moraine doesn't find us? What if nobody does? But the, the, he shuddered, unable to say it. We'll think about that when it happens, he told Matt fir firmly. If it happens, the worst meant seeking out Elaine, the Esedai in the palace. He would go on to Tarvalon first. He'd did not know if Matt remembered what Thome had said about the red Aja and the black, but he surely did. His stomach twisted again. Tom said to find an inn called the Queen's Blessing. We'll go there first. How we can't afford one meal between the two of us. At least it's... We'll go there first, how we can't afford one meal between the two of us. At least it's a place to start. Thone thought we could find help there. I can't, Rand. They're everywhere. Matt dropped his eyes to the paving stones and seemed to shrink in on himself, trying to pull away from the people that were all around them. Wherever we go, they're right behind us, or they're waiting for us. They'll be at the Queen's blessing, too. I can't. I. Nothing's going to stop a fade. Rand grabbed Matt's collar in a fist that he was trying hard to keep from trembling. He needed Matt. Maybe the others were aware. Light, please. But right then. He needed Matt. Maybe the others were alive. Like, Rand grabbed Matt's collar in a fist that he was trying hard to keep from trembling. He needed Matt. Matt, maybe the others were alive. Like, please. But right then and there, it was just Matt and him. The thought of going on alone, he swallowed hard, tasting bile. He looked around quickly. No one seemed to have heard Matt's mention, or heard Matt mention the fade. The crowd pressed past, lost in its own worries. He put his face close to Matt's. We made it this far, haven't we? He asked in a hoarse whisper. They haven't caught us yet. We can make it all the way if we just don't, don't quit. I won't just quit and wait for them like a sheep for slaughter. I won't. Well... Are you going to stand here till you starve to death or until we or until they come back or come pick you up in a sack? He let go of Matt and turned away. His fingernails dug into his palms, but his hands still trembled. Suddenly Matt was walking alongside him, his eyes still down, and Rand let out a long breath. I'm sorry, Rand, Matt mumbled. Forget it, Matt forget it, Rand said. Matt barely looked up enough to keep from walking into people while the words poured out in a lifeless voice i can't stop thinking i'll never see home again i want to go home laugh if you want i don't care what i wouldn't give to have my mother blessing me out of blessing me out for something right now it's like weights on my brain hot weights strangers all around and no way to no way to find who who to trust if i can trust
<clears throat> Matt barely looked up enough to keep from walking into people while the words poured out in a lifeless voice. I can't stop thinking I'll never see home again. I want to go home laugh if you want. I don't care what I wouldn't give to have my mother blessing me out for, for something right now. It's like weights on my brain, hot weights. Strangers all around and no way to tell who to trust if I can trust anybody. Light, the two rivers is so far away it might as well be on the other side of the world. We're alone and we'll never get home. We're going to die, Rand. Not yet, we won't, Rand retorted. Everybody dies, the wheel turns. I'm not going to curl up and wait for it to happen, though. You sound like Master Alvar, Matt grumbled, but his voice had a little spirit in it. Good, Bran said. Good, Light. Let the others be all right. Please let us be alone. You sound like Master Abel, Matt grumbled, but his voice had a little spirit in it. Good, Rand said, good. Light, let the others be all right. Please don't let us be alone. He began asking directions to the Queen's blessing. The responses varied widely. A curse for all those who did not stay where they belonged, or a shrug and a blank look being the most common. Some stopped on... He began asking directions to the Queen's blessing. The responses varied widely. A curse for all those who did not stay where they belonged, or a shrug and a blank look being the most common. Some stalked on by it with no more than a glance, if that. A broad-faced man, nearly as big as Perrin, cocked his head and... And said, the queen's blessing, eh? You country boys, queen's men. He wore a white cockroach on his wide-brimmed hat and a white armband on his long coat. Well, you've come too late. and a white armband on his long coat. Well, you've come too late. He went off roaring with laughter, leaving Rand and Matt to stare at one another in puzzlement. Rand shrugged them where there were plenty of odd people, or odd folk in Camelot, people like he had never seen before. Some of them stood out in the crowd, skins too dark or too pale, People like he had never seen before. Some of them stood out in the crowd, skins too dark or too pale, coats of strange cut or bright colors, hats with pointed peaks or long feathers. There were women with veils across their faces, women in stiff dresses as white as the wearer and tavern a little bit. Rand shrugged. There were plenty of odd people in Cam, odd folk in Camlin, people like he had never seen. Oh, wait, I already read that. Coat, coats of strange cut or bright colors, hats with pointed peaks or long feathers. There were women with veils across their faces, women in stiff dresses as wide as the wearer was tall, women in dresses that left more skin bare than any tavern maid he had seen. Occasionally, a carriage all vivid 
paint and guilt squeeze through the strong streets behind a four or six horse team with plumes on their head harnesses the sedan chairs were everywhere the pullman pushing with plumes on their harnesses sedan chairs were everywhere the pullman pushing along with never a care for who they shoved aside. Rand saw one fight start th that way, a brawling heap of men swinging their fists while a pale-skinned man in a red-striped coat with, or in a, in a red-striped coat climbed out of the sedan chair lying on its side. Two roughly dressed men who seemed to have been just passing by up Till then, jumping on him before he was clear, the crowd just had it enough Rand saw one fight start that way, a sprawling heap of men swinging their fists with, while a pale-skinned man in a red-striped coat climbed out of the sedan chair lying on its side. Two roughly dressed men who seemed to have been just passing by up till then. Two rough dressed, roughly dressed men who seemed to have been just passing by up till then jumped on him before he was clear. The crowd that had stopped to watch began to turn ugly, muttering and shaking fists. Rand pulled at Matt's sleeve and hurried on. Matt needed no urging or no second urging. The roar of a small riot followed them. Down the street, several times men approached the two of them instead of the other way around. Their, their dusty clothes marked them as newcomers and seemed to act like a magnet on some sort of way. Sedan chair, too rough. To, wait a minute. Before he was clear, the crowd that had stopped to watch began to turn, ugly, muttering and shaking fists. Rand pulled that Matt's sleeve and hurried on. Matt needed no second urging. The roar of a small riot followed them down the street. Several times, men approached the two of them instead of the other way around. Their dusty. Their dusty clothes marked them as newcomers and seemed to act like a magnet on some trees. The roar of a small riot followed them down the street. Several times men approached the two of them instead of the other way around. Their dusty clothes marked them as newcomers and seemed to act like a magnet on some types. Ferdy fellows who offered relics of low game for sale with darting eyes and feet set to run. Rand calculated he was offered enough scraps of the false dragon's cloak and fragments of his sword to make two swords and half a dozen cloaks. Rain calculated he was offered enough scraps of the false dragon's Cloak and fragments of his sword to make two swords and half a dozen cloaks. Matt's face brightened with interest the first time at least, but Rand pulled, uh, Rand gave them all a curtain on and they went with it. 
get a little curtain on or curtain no and they took it with a bob of the head and a quick light illumined the queen good master and vanished most of the shops had plates uh, and cups painted with false or fanciful coins To make two swords and half a dozen cloaks. Matt's face brightened with interest the first time at least, but Rand gave them all a curt no, and they took it with a bob of the head and a quick light illumined the queen, good master, and vanished. Most of the shops had plates and cups painted with fanciful scenes purporting to show the false dragon being displayed before the queen in chains. And there were white cloaks in the streets, each walked in an open space that moved with him just as just as in Barlow. I illumined the queen, good master, and vanished. Most of the shops had plates and cups painted with fanciful scenes purporting to show the false dragon being displayed before the queen in chains and there were white cloaks in the streets. Each walked in an open space that seemed... Light illumined the queen, good master, and vanished. Most of the shops had plates and cups painted with fanciful scenes purporting to show the false dragon being displayed before the queen in chains, and there were white cloaks in the streets, each walked in an open space that moved with him, just as in Barlone. Staying unnoticed was something Rand thought about a great deal. He kept his cloak over his sword, but that would not be good enough for very long. Sooner or later, someone would wonder what he was hiding. He would not, could not take Bunt's advice to stop wearing it, not, not his link to Tam and to his father. He w would not, could not take Bunt's advice to stop wearing it, not his link to Tam. To his father. Many others among the throng wore swords, but none with the heron mark to pull the eye. All the Camlin men, though, and some of the strangers had their swords wound in strips of cloth, sheath, and sheath and and hair and marks could be hidden under those wrappings and no one would see strips of clothes sheath and hilt red bound with white cord or white bound with red a hundred Aaron Marks could besides violent uh, red red bound with white cord or white bound with red. A hundred hair marks could be hidden under those wrappings, and no one would 
see besides following local cust local fashion would make them seem to fit in more. A good many shops were for were fronted with tables displaying the cloth and cord. Could be hi hidden under those wrappings and no one would see. Besides, following local fashion would make them seem to fit in more. A good many shops were fronted with tables displaying the cloth and cord. And Rand stopped at one. The red cloth was cheaper than the white. However, he could see no difference apart from an occasional... Though, though he could see no difference apart from the color, so he bought that and the white cord to go with it, despite Matt's complaints about how little money they had or had left. The tight-lipped shopkeeper eyed them down in the... The red cloth was cheaper than the white, though he could see no difference apart from the color, so he bought that and the white cord to go with it, despite Matt's complaints about how, how little... Though he could see... The red cloth was cheaper than the white, though he could see no difference apart from the color, so he bought that and the white cord to go with it, despite Matt's complaints about how little money white cord to go with it despite Matt's complaints about how little money they had left the tight-lipped shopkeeper eyed them up and down with a twist to his mouth while, while he took Rand's coppers and cursed them when Rand asked for a place inside the rapist's sword we didn't come to see Logan Rand said impatient or said patiently we just came to see Camelot he remembered Bunt and added the grand grandest city uh, in the loon We didn't come to see Logan, Rand said patiently. We just came to see Camlin. He remembered but and added the grandest city in the world. The shopkeeper's grimace remained in place. The light illumined good Queen Morgase, Rand said hopefully. You make any trouble, the man said sourly, and there's a hundred men in sound of my voice will take care of you even if the guards won't. He paused to spit, just missing Rand's foot. Get on about your filthy business. Rand nodded as if the man had bid him a cheerful farewell and pulled Matt away. Matt kept looking back over his shoulder toward the shop, growling to himself until... Ran nodded as if the man had bid him a cheerful farewell and pulled Matt away. Matt kept looking back over his shoulder toward the shop, growling to himself until Ran tugged him into an empty alley. With their backs to the street, no passerby could see what they were doing. Ran pulled off the sword belt and set to wrapping the sheath and hilt.
Rand pulled off the sword belt and set to wrapping the sheath and hilt. I'll bet he charged you double for that bloody cloth, Matt said. Triple. It was not as it was not as easy as it looked, fastening the strips of cloth and the cord so the whole thing would not fall off. They'll all be trying to cheat us, Rand. They think we've come to see the false dragon like everybody else. We'll be lucky if somebody doesn't hit us on the head while we sleep. This is another time. Or this is no place to be. There are too many people. Let's leave for Tyrolon now or south to Ilion. I wouldn't mind seeing them gather for the hunt of the horn. I wouldn't mind seeing them gather for the hunt of the horn. If we can't go home, let's just go. I'm staying, Rand said. If they're not here already, they'll come here sooner or later looking for us. He was not sure if he had the wrappings done the way everyone, everybody else did, but the herons on the scabbard and hilt were hidden, and he thought it was secure. As he went back out on the street, he was sure that he had one less thing to worry about. Causing trouble. Mm. One last thing to worry about. Causing trouble. Matt trailed along beside him as reluctantly as if he were being pulled on a leash. Bit by bit, Rand did, not, did get the directions he wanted. At first, they were vague on the order of somewhere in that direction. Bit by bit, Rand did get the directions he wanted. At first, they were vague on the order of somewhere in that direction and over that way. The nearer they came, though, the clearer the directions until at last they stood before a broad stone building with a sign over the door creaking in the wind, a man kneeling before a lady with red golden hair and a crown, one of his hands resting on his bestowed on his bowed head. A man kneeling before a woman with red, red gold hair and a crown, one of her hands resting on his bowed head, the queen's blessing. Are you sure about this, Matt asked? Of course, Rand said. He took a deep breath and pushed open the door. The common room was large and pan paneled with dark wood, and fires on two hearths warmed it. A serving maid was sweeping the floor, though it was self-clean. Are you sure about this, Matt asked. Of course, Rand said. He took a deep breath and pushed open the door. The common room was large and paneled with dark wood and fires. On two hearths swarmed it. A serving maid was sweeping the floor, though it was clean, and another was polishing candlesticks in the corner. Each smiled at the two newcomers before going back to her work. Only a few tables had people at them, but a dozen men was a crowd for... So early in the day, and if none that looked, but a dozen men was a crowd for so early in the morning, and if none looked exactly happy to see him and Matt, at least they looked clean and sober. The smells of roasting beef and baking bread.
but it doesn't mean it was a crown for so early in the day, and if none looked exactly happy to see him and Matt, at least they looked clean and sober. The smells of roasting beef and baking bread drifted from the kitchen, making Rand's mouth water. The innkeeper was fat. He was pleased to see a pink-faced man in a starched white apron with graying hair combed to one's come to the back of the head. The, the innkeeper was fat and he was pleased or was fat. He was pleased to see a pink faced man in a starched white apron with graying hair combed back over a bald spot that that it did not quite cover his sharp eye took them in with green hair comes back over a bald spot that it did not white cover. His sharp eye took them in from head to toe, dusty clothes and bundles and worn boots, but he had a ready, pleasant smile too. Basil Gill was his name. Master Gill ran, to, ran said a friend of ours told us to come here. Thom Marilyn His sharp eye took them in from head to toe, dusty clothes and bundles and worn boots. But he had a ready, pleasant smile, too. Basil Gill was his name. Master Gill ran, said a friend of ours took us to come, or told us to come here. Though Maryland, he, the innkeeper's smile slipped, ran, looked at Matt, but he was too busy sniffing sniffing the aromas coming from the kitchen to notice anything. Right. Master Gil Rand said, a friend of ours told us to come here. Though Maryland, he the innkeeper's smile slipped. Rand looked at Matt, but he was too busy sniffing the aroma, the aromas coming from the kitchen, to notice anything else. Is something wrong? You do not, or you do know him. I know him, Gil said curtly. He seemed more interested in the flute case at Rand's side now than in anything else. Come with me. He jerked his head toward the back. Rand gave Matt a jerk to get him started, then followed, wondering what was going on. In the kitchen, Master Gill paused to speak to the cook, a round woman with her hair in a bun to the, at the back of the neck. jerked his head toward the back, ran, gave Matt a jerk to get him started, then followed, wondering what was going on. In the kitchen, Master Gill paused to speak to the cook, a round woman with her hair in a bun at the back of her head, who almost matched the innkeeper pound for pound. She kept stirring her pots while Master Gill talked. The smells were so good. Two days hunger made a fine sauce for anything. But this smelled as good as Mistress Albert's kitchen. That 
Rand's stomach growled. Matt was leaning toward the pod's nose first. Matt, uh, Rand nudged him. Matt hastily wiped his chin where he had begun drooling. Then the innkeeper was hurrying them out of the, out the back door. In, in the stable yard, he looked around to make sure no one was close, then grounded on them on Rand. What's in the case, lad? Thumb sploot, Rand said. Slowly, he opened the case as if showing the gold and silver chase flute would help. Matt's hand crept under his coat. Master Gill did not take his eyes off Rand. I, I recognize it. I saw him play it often enough, and there's not likely to like that outside of royal court. The pleasant smiles were gone, and his sharp eyes were suddenly as sharp as a knife. How did you come by it? Thome would part with his arm as soon as that flew. He gave it to me. Ran took Thome's bundled cloak from his back and set it on the ground, unfolding enough to show the colored patches as well as, as the end of the harp case. Thome's dead, Master Gill. If he was your friend, I am sorry. He was mine, too. Dead, you say? How? A, a man tried to kill us. Thome pushed this at me. And told us to run. The patches fluttered in the wind like butterflies. Rand's throat caught. He folded the cloak carefully back up again. We'd have been killed if it hadn't been for him. We were on our way to Camlin together. He told us to come here to your inn. I'll believe he's dead, the innkeeper said slowly when I see his corpse. He nudged the bundled cloak with his toe and cleared his throat roughly. Nay, nay, I believe you saw whatever it was you saw. I just don't believe he's dead. He's a harder man to kill than you might believe is old Thumb Marilyn. Rand put a hand on Matt's shoulder. It's all right, Matt. He's a friend. Master Gill glanced at Matt and sighed. I suppose I am at that. Matt straightened up slowly, folding his arms over his chest. He was still watching the innkeeper warily, though, and a muscle in his cheek twitched. Coming to Camlin, you say? The innkeeper shook his head. This is the last place on earth I'd expect Thome to come, and ex excepting maybe it was Tarbalon. He waited for a stableman to pass, leading a horse, and even then he lowered his voice. You've trouble with the ace that I, I take it. Yes, Matt grumbled at the same time that Rand said, What makes you think that? Master Gill chuckled dryly. I know the man, that's what. He'd jump into that kind of trouble, especially to help a couple of lads about the age of you. The reminiscence in his eyes flickered out, and he stood up straight with a cherry, charry look. Now, uh, I'm not making any accusations mine but uh i take it neither of you can uh what i'm getting at is uh what exactly is the nature of your trouble with tarvalon if you don't mind my asking Rand's skin prickled as he realized what the man was suggesting the one power no no nothing like that i swear there was even an ace and I helping us, Moraine was, he bit his tongue, but the innkeeper's expression never changed. Glad to hear it. Not that I've all that much love for ace and I, but it's better them than that other, that other thing. He shook his head slowly. Too much talk of that kind of thing with Logan being brought here. No offense meant, you understand, but well, I had to know, didn't I? No offense, Rand said. Matt, Matt's murmur could have been anything, but the innkeeper appeared to take it for the same as Rand had said. You two look the sort, and I do believe you were our friends of them. But it's hard times and stony days. I don't suppose you can pay. No, I didn't think so. There's not enough of anything in what there is cost the earth so i'll give you beds not the best but warm and dry and something to eat and i cannot promise more however much i'd like thank you Rand said with a quizzical glance at matt 
It's more than I expected what was the right sort, and why should he promise more? Well, Thumb's a good friend, an old friend, hot-headed and liable to say the worst possible thing to the one person he shouldn't, but a good friend all the same. If he doesn't show up, well, we'll figure out, we'll figure something out then. Best you don't talk any more talk about Ace and I helping you. I'm a good Queens man, but there are too many in Camlin right now who'd take it wrong, and I don't mean just the white cloaks. Matt snorted, for all I care, the Ravens can take every ace of die straight to Shadow Ghoul. Watch your tongue, Master Gill snapped. I said I don't love them. I didn't say I'm a fool. Thinks they're behind any or everything that's wrong. The Queen supports Elaide, and the guards stand for the Queen, the lights in things don't go so bad that changes. Anyway, lately some guards have forgotten themselves enough to be a little rough with folks. They over here speaking against Aes Sedai, not on duty, thank the light, but it's happened. Just the same, I don't need off-duty guards breaking up my common room to teach you a lesson. And I don't need white cloaks egging somebody on to paint the dragon's fang on my door. So if you want any help out of me, you just keep thoughts about Ace and I to yourself, good or bad. He paused thoughtfully, then added, maybe it's best you don't mention Thumb's name either, where anyone but me can hear. Some of the guards have long memories, and so does the queen. No need taking chances. Thumb had trouble with the queen, Rand said incredulously. And the innkeeper laughed. So he didn't tell you everything. Don't know why he should. On the other hand, I don't know why you shouldn't know either. Not like it's a secret, exactly. Do you think every glee man thinks as much of himself as Thom does? Well, come to think of it, I guess they do. But it always seemed to me Thom had an extra helping of thinking a lot of himself. He wasn't always a glee man, you know, wandering from village to village and sleeping under a hedge as often as not. There was a time though Maryland was court barred right here in Camlin and known in every royal court from Tyr to Meridon. Thome, Matt said. Rand nodded slowly. He could picture Thome at a queen's court with his stately manner and grand gestures. That he was, Master Gill said. It was not long after Terengel the Mud. Uh, Demodred died that the trouble about his nephew cropped up. There was some said Thome was, shall we say, closer to the queen than was proper, but Morgase was a young widow, and Thome was in his prime then, and the queen can do as she wishes in the way I look, is the way I look at it, only she's always had a temper, has our good Morgase, and he took off without a word when he learned what kind of trouble his nephew was in. The queen didn't much like that, didn't like him meddling in Esedai matters either. Can't say I think it was right either, nephew or no. Anyway, when he came back, he said some words all right. Words you don't say to a queen, words you don't say to any woman with Morgase's spirit. Elaide was set against him because of his trying to mix in the business with his nephew, and between the queen's temper and Elaide's animosity, Thome left Camelon half a step ahead of a trip to prison, if not the headman's axe. As far as I know, the writ still stands. If it was a long time ago, Rand said, maybe nobody remembers. Master Gill shook his head. Gareth Brynn is Captain General of the Queen's Guard. He personally commanded the guardsmen Morgase sent to bring Thome back in chains, and I misdoubt he'll ever forget returning empty-handed to find Thome had already been back to the palace and left again. And the Queen never forgets anything. 
you ever know a woman who did my but Morgase was in a taking. I'll swear the whole city walked off or walked soft and whispered for a month. Plenty of other guardsmen old enough to remember too. No best you keep foam as close a secret as you keep that acidi of yours. Come I'll get you something to eat. You look as if your bellies are gnawing at your backbones. And that is the end of chapter 35. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch uh, the Wheel of Time series on Amazon Prime. And I, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will put my contact information in the description down below in case anybody wants to contact me or send me something. And as always, everyone have a wonderful day and be safe. Bye-bye.